I wasn't going to do a video about this, but uh, started to get a little bit creative and I figured I might as well. So the concept is I need to get variable infrastructure from my main coop over to the actual ranging coops. But uh, the catch here is I didn't want to spend even a dollar or even a penny on this project. So it's all just hodgepodge. Here I have some uh, PVC, probably three inch. Then I have this galvanized steel here, which uh, actually came off of a rotted awning roller. We, we're starting at three inch, getting down to two inch, and then the majority of the line is two inch, which is still adequate for my purposes. And the main reason that I'm doing this project at all is because I uh, am automating the coop doors opening and closing, but I also wanted to automate watering and other functions. Now, the uh, soil here in North Carolina is extremely hard. It's mostly rocks with a handful of dirt. And what dirt there is is pretty much exclusively clay. So I generally use my subsoiler and the main reason I bought this was actually for the purpose of trenching. I also bought a plow for the purpose of trenching and it works okay but you get these big clumps coming up and each of those clumps weighs around 100 pounds and it, it becomes a real workout. Now the catch here with using a subsoiler for trenching is that you'll uh, be able to break up the dirt but then you have to displace it manually by moving it with a shovel. See, check this out. This is a nice big rock, but at least it can be moved. <laughs> Plenty of rocks around here you can't even move and you won't get them out. I suspect some maybe even the tips of mountains or something. So now what I'm gonna have to do is uh, by hand remove all of the dirt that I broke up. Unfortunately, my uh, favorite trenching shovel has lost its bend. And I know why, it's because I abused the heck out of it. As you can see, the chickens have come to help me dig this trench out. I uncovered a lot of stuff apparently. Time to see how well my quote fixed trenching shovel works. Here we are. I don't know if you can see that very well, actually. I'll do an upside down shot. Yeah, I'm probably at about, I'd say six or eight inches, something like that. Big thing of chickens over there. Hopefully they all know how to get out of the way when I get the tractor involved. So what I'm going to do is get a second pass. Let me show you a few of these rocks. This is a pretty big one here. For our reference. Here's another big one. And a few more. So I'm at about 12 inches now. I had to dig out this area manually and uh, I hit this, this big rock here. And uh, I had to pry it out, which is why there's this massive hole right here. 
All right, so the method I'm going to use to connect up all this junk pipe is uh, some reclaimed bicycle wheel tire inner tubes. And uh, I wanted to zip tie them to the edges, but I couldn't find my zip ties. I only found one, so I'm gonna use electric tape. For the love of God, do not attempt to replicate what I'm doing here because it is absolutely not code. So if you want to do this to code, I would recommend you use steel conduit. You only have to go down six inches then. Or if you're in a colder area, you could use the uh, PVC conduit that's made for electrical and kick that down, I want to say 12 inches, but don't quote me on that. I do know 18 to 24 is fairly typical for direct burial. All right, <laughs> this is kind of funny. These chickens are running away from a hawk in the area. Now that they've taken refuge under this big coop, they see my little pipe thing going on. Anyway, I screwed up my alignment just a little bit, but I'm not going to cry over it. It doesn't really matter. And here it is. The pipe is laid. You'll note that I stuck those big rocks on top of it. It's an excellent way to get rid of them, because what else are you going to do with all these big rocks? All right, so what do I have here? I have two landscaping wires rated at I think, 200 volts. I have some 14-2 underground feeder line for the mains. And then I have two gel-filled Cat 5E lines. All of these are UF rated. They can all be used for direct burial. So the conduit is really just so that I have a tunnel to add more stuff later on if I need to. Windy as heck out. So this is my little trick with the packs. I cut that on an angle so I can rotate this around and also electric tape these all together temporarily. So now I just have to push these through the conduit I laid out. Well, the best laid plans, I ended up uh, cutting again on the packs here to make it more of a pointed arrow sort of shape. As, uh, these cuts are for this dang fence. It wraps right around here. Yeah, this is kind of a pain. But doing a, trying to do 80 feet, you know, push 80 feet is uh, a tremendous task. This thing was giving me such a hard time after pushing it through twice and couldn't get it to the end. I uh, took out the lathe and I made this cone. So I'm going to tape the cone to the front and push it through that way and see if I can get all the way to the end. All right, so the cone trick worked a charm, a treat charm. <laughs> um, now I just have to uh, bury the line before this uh, storm comes in. It's been threatening for a couple hours now. All right, so this is uh, ready for filling and for that, I like to use a hoe. So here we go, I threw a few rocks around the gaps between these two pipes. The idea is to be able to remove that four inch pipe and access it if I need to. All right, so finished closing up the old trench that I just did. And you can see the pipe right there. And then right here, I uh, located the previous water line and uh, tied into it. Then I have this coming up here. I have foam insulation going through this piece of uh, probably one and a half, two inch, what is this? Uh, yeah, one and a half inch PVC, which I uh, just used a heat gun to bend right here that bend in it and no leaks you can see here these are two cat 5e e lines the uh, electric line 20 amp GFCI is just under that water line and uh, I was 
digging and I hit these first. I had forgotten that these were an afterthought, so they're only a few inches under. I'd already started covering. If you enjoyed watching this, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it because then I don't have to post on other websites and such to uh, try to help people find this stuff. I don't even monetize it. I just am trying to help people and uh, also documenting my projects for my own reference and my kids and that sort of thing. So I appreciate it if you can share this stuff and help my channel gain a little bit of momentum so I don't have to work so hard to publicize it. Thanks a lot.